Guys, this is my Creality Ender V2. I used to have a V1. I bought that for about $100. I bought this one, upgraded board, upgraded screen, and it was, I think, $80 I paid for it. I got it to work, it printed fine. The last print that I did was one of my sculptures, and then I started printing the bottom part, and something happened. So now, when I turn it on, I've actually replaced the board, I've replaced the all of the tubes and now the screen is not even showing up not exactly sure what is going on but i am going to sell this for parts put it up on craigslist or something and you know the thing is i spent a lot of money on it fixing it and upgrading it so now i have a new printer in this video i'm going to show you the printer i just got and this is the printer I chose. Of all the printers that I could have gotten, I bought this. This is the Sovol SV06. Since I'm pretty new to 3D printing, I wasn't sure which one to get. I decided to get this because it was highly recommended by a YouTube channel that I follow called Maker's Muse. And <clears throat> you compare this to a much less expensive Prusa MK3. And I read up on the MK3 Prusa and everyone loves it. And the problem is it's very expensive. This thing, you could buy this on Amazon right now for $2.99. But I found this on Sovol's website for $234. So I bought that instead. And if this is as good as a Prusa for a fraction of a cost, I'll take that. The only thing that Maker's Muse said about this being a major downside is the when the filament runs out, there is no signal saying to you know pause and then start again. So, but for me, not that big of an issue. That's why I bought it. So I'm kind of glad if this works as good as the Prusa, as people say is the Prusa. I'm going to be very happy. So I want to do this unboxing with you guys right now. I know that this is a sculpture channel and art channel, but I also feel that, you know, scanning my sculptures and printing them, that's really what I'm getting this for. I'm not interested in printing um, gadgets or, you know, iPhone cases or anything like that. I just want to reproduce my sculptures and 3D printers, 3D scanners are coming along really well. So you have instructions, you have the control unit or the computer. That's the computer. Nothing here, some sort of bracket. More foam. And here's the base. I am going to continue just removing as much as possible before I remove. Here's a little box. So this is a spatula, a USB card, nozzles, the, the arms. So this is like various accessories we're going to need. Aha. Uh -huh. This is the, I guess the head. Mm -hmm. Oh, the nozzle. Yeah, you know, apparently, uh, Maker's Muse was talking about how intricate this is. Um, this looks much different than the Creality Ender. It looks much more complex and there's a lot of weight to it. Um, so, we're going to see how well this works. I can't wait. I have so many projects I want to print. This is the sides. Look at that. Ah, this is that magnetic. That's pretty cool. Very nice looking. So it's a magnetic metal uh, base for printing. And it's got a texture to it, so. And I believe this is the base. I think that's it with the printer. So let's put it aside. Put the base here. So this is what comes with it. A little spatula. These are pretty handy to have. Love the uh, socket so you can plug it into your computer and a memory card which is 8 gigabytes. So that's a nice uh, little thing to have. 
that comes with this, which is where the reel of plastic is going to go, and this is the lockable arm. This is for working on the printer, tightening bolts, a hex, a socket wrench, some tweezers, so, and the thing for cleaning the nozzle. So we're gonna hang on to that. We don't need that just yet. This is a M3 and three pieces, very well done. The one, here's another M5, except much longer. So here, it looks like there's a slot for it on the sides. So I believe they just kind of slide in here. There we go. Kind of locks into place. Now we have to figure out where to install these bolts. We're gonna put one bolt here, just thread it by hand for now. There are holes like this on the other side. So I'm gonna take this two bolts and I'm gonna do that exactly to the other side. Just make sure that you put in that washer. If you have a 3D printer, you most likely already have one of these hex tools. And all you do is tighten it a little bit. I'm not going to tighten it too much. I like to do it very slowly. I don't want to crack any of these as well. It doesn't look that great. The display is kind of like LCD, but so is the Prusa. Um, I guess I kind of wanted a, a touch screen. So this is the display, and right about here, this is where you're gonna be putting it. You can see these sockets on the side. I'm just going to slide this into the holes. There we go. All right, next step is to install the power supply. So this is a 360 watt, 24 volt power supply, and you want to look for the two holes, and if you look here, that's one, that's two, and I believe it's going to go on the right side of the printer, and you're going to use the M4, there we go, they're the M420s, I'm just going to tighten it a little bit, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom one, make sure it goes into the hole. up is installing this extruder kit. Um, this looks much more robust than the Creality one, so I'm very impressed, but that's what we're going to install next. Use these M3 bolts for the extruder. There, there we go. P really perfect fit. Um, Once you get one, at least you'll have that to help you put the rest of the bolts. So that one is on there. And now we're going to put the two others. And I'll just go around, tighten it again, one quarter turn. You know, I wasn't sure what they meant about aircraft switch, but on this side, which is the left side in the back, there's this. It looks like an aircraft, but I mean, if you don't know anything about these printers, you might not know what this is. They say to turn the aircraft switch on the control box hanging plate, which is the hanging plate here, to the left, uh, to the left from the locked state of the unlocked state. So this is straight, this is locked. And now what we have here is the control box and that's going to go on here. Kind of push it down, it locks into place and then you just put it this way. So that's what you do with it. Once the control box is in place and it slides right in, you just turn this to the locked uh, uh, position and no one can slide it out. So the only two screws left are these M510s, and that's going to be for the holder for the filament. Let's install that.
the, the wiring. So this is the Z2. I believe the Z2 goes right here. And then there's this black cable that I'm just gonna put it into the first one. You know, it's very easy for somebody like me that doesn't know much about 3D printers to do all of this. It's really excellent. On the left of the motor is the Z axis. I believe it's this one or Z1. And we have one more. This is the X axis. You know, the way they labeled them and the way they cut these wires there's only one way of putting them, so you can't really destroy it. And of course, it goes into this motor. There we go. thing I'm going to do is connect the power. This is the power from the power supply to the motherboard. Using the supplied power cable, we're going to connect this thing. This part wrapped in a zip tie. And they gave us a nice little tool to cut. Make sure you don't cut the cables. There's a ribbon cable. And we are going to be putting it, I believe, like this. And that's going to attach right here on the printer. There we go. When you push it down, these connectors just go in and the cable is in. So now we're going to set it up. I'm going to plug in the power supply. And on the right side, you turn on the power, and there we go. Soval. First time ever. And very much like the old Creality screen. I mean, this looks exactly the same. You push in, and then it gives you the info screen, except the knob is a lot nicer. You could put a glass sheet if you want. I did buy one from Creality, and this is the exact size that's the Creality printable um, area. But I'm going to start using this magnetic metal. Look at that. It just really just straps on. This is quite strong, guys. Now, we'll take our roll of filament through the hole up here on the top and then when it can't go anymore, there's a little switch, like just a little uh, lever here, and it locks, locks in. So much easier to load. If that's the case, that is extremely easy to load the filament onto the nozzle. Before you get started making tons of things, you might want to consider taking your time with these zip ties to strap everything uh, away from any moving parts. These screens in the middle, like this is not very impressive. I wish it was a little bit fancier, but I do realize that you're trying to cut costs. SV06, the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, 100% media inserted. And then that's the time for the print. A few steps is you gotta get the bed leveled. So we're gonna go bed leveling. You push in for the command and you rotate the wheel. It's very primitive, but it does work fairly well. To Z align. And so it's doing something. It's quiet. I'm looking around to make sure there's nothing binding. Notice that this is very different than the Creality. This has got like two rods here, two rods there. This is supposed to be how the Prusa 3D printers are. So that's the reason these 3D printers, these are clones of the Prusas. And I don't mind getting a clone uh, as long as it works close to it. Uh, you know, the Prusas are just way too expensive, $1,200, $1,400. So this is the first auto Z align that we're doing. And I do like this much more. The idea of having the filament go on top, just pull that in. One of the things I struggled was putting the filament in the Creality uh, printer. It's just so difficult sometimes. I'm gonna do auto home automatically. And we're gonna do yes. We have reached the operating temperature. Now I'm gonna do click bed leveling and we are gonna do 
auto home again. Now after the machine stops, go back and click probe Z offset to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the hotbed. And this is how you adjust the dis distance between the bed and the nozzle. It should be about 0.2 millimeters, the thickness of a sheet of A4 paper. Today we're going to measure that the Z offset is to slide a sheet and it's a little bit, yeah, it's too much. So we need to change the Z offset. There's a little bit of drag, not much. And there's a little bit of a drag, that's what you want. Once the Z offset is done, just push enter. So at this point, we click level bed on the printer. And settings are stored. We are ready for our first print. The quality on this is much, much, much better than the Ender, Ender 3. I love the Ender 3, by the way. If it didn't crap out on me, I would still be using it now, but just looking at the quality of this, I can tell why people like the Prusa. Of course, I can't really afford the Prusa, but I got the Sovol, and for a fraction of the cost, I think I made the right decision. Uh, I hate to pry this out. It is quite amazing. I just lift this thing up, and then you, it's still kind of hot. You see how magnetic it is. You just kind of do this, and it separates. This is the easiest way of removing something from the plate I've ever experienced. Really excellent. I recommend you guys get these metal plates and it leaves so little residue behind. So I'm just gonna put it back and then clean it. But I am very impressed with this printer. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.